Welcome class to week four. Um, just some things that I've noticed um, as I've been going through your graded material. I noticed in week two for the angel project, I'm missing a lot of projects and typically I don't accept late work, but it's a hundred point um, project. So I would prefer at this point that if you can turn it in, by the end of week four, if you would please, because I don't want you to miss out on potential points um, by not doing the project. Also, I wanted to remind you, for week four, um, I have given everyone full credit for discussion board. So I've made an announcement about it a few weeks ago, but please don't do discussion board four because you don't need to. And I know this class is very fast paced and you have, um, you have a lot of work, and I'm sure this isn't your only course that you're taking. So I understand how hard some of this can be. I know week two was loaded between discussion board, the angel project, there was an exam. So there was a lot going on. So um, please just hang in there. Um, we're halfway there. So um, try to get that, that assignment done, um, and that way you can get the maximum credit. Um, we're talking about chapters 9 and 10, and I'm, I'm not going to try to just, I'm going to kind of breeze through it, give you a bit of an overview, um, make sure you read your text and look over that. Um, so we're talking about growth and motor development from ages 6 to 12. We're kind of moving from infancy and then progressing onward. Um, so we're talking about general growth, so large more mus muscle coordination, fine motor skills, and ha eye hand coordination. Um, I think as you see, like as kids start to develop and get to about six years old, so that's either kindergarten, first grade, you can see that they can do things a lot easier, like bouncing a basketball or skipping jump rope, or they're just able to do two things at once versus maybe when they were younger. So you'll see those kinds of things. Generally, females tend to grow kind of faster than boys. You see that girls kind of develop faster than boys. Um, a lot of girls in fifth and sixth grade are taller than most boys in their class. Um, they can have less muscle um, and potentially more coordination earlier um, than boys. There's big growth spurts between ages six to eight, um, and this affects the sensory cortex. And from 10 to 12 years of age, the frontal lobes and cerebral cortex add synapses, which is a big brain development, right? Um, I would say even um, nowadays it's it's a little bit alarming, but by 10 years old or so, you have girls that are already starting puberty um, for a lot of reasons. And so girls are sometimes developing in a lot of different capacities very, very young versus maybe boys starting puberty. Um, spatial perception and lateralization improves learning math concepts and problem solving and spatial cognition about the ability to infer rules from making from and make predictions about movements of objects in space so um just a better understanding of things so head injuries are more common whether it be from motor vehicles um that's why we encourage you know to wear helmets, you know, even adults should wear helmets, even though they're really uncool. Uh, but that is why we encourage them. I always joked with my husband when he would go mountain bike riding and not want to wear a helmet, a helmet, I would say, well, when you ruin my life because you become like, you know, a paraplegic, uh, just remember that you didn't want to wear a helmet because it wasn't cool. <laughs> and um, he would, he eventually started wearing a helmet. But these kinds of things can happen. We even talk about that nowadays with um, sports, right? With football, the movie Concussion. When we look at potential head injuries with soccer now and headers, I think they've changed what they do in practices nowadays um, to prevent the head injuries. But it's a big deal and it affects people in a dramatic way. Um, asthma is a chronic disease of children. Um, there can be things in the weather, air quality, just infections. I think some people are more susceptible to it. It can cause school absences. It can cause children not to be able to do certain activities or sports because of the issue with um, the asthma reacting. And some asthma is very, as anything, it has a degree. Like some kids have very severe asthma and they're on a lot of pred, pred, um, steroids and things of that nature. I was going to say prednisone. That's one of the drugs that they may give, but they're on a lot of steroids. 
things of that nature to other kids where every so often they need their inhaler. So it varies in degree, but that is a common element for children. Obesity, we talk about that a lot in our culture. Um, and we talk about how to be healthy. That was President Obama's, Michelle Obama's big deal is like kids working out and getting fit. Um, it says it's the most serious long-term health risk of middle childhood, affecting nearly one in five children are overweight. I've seen kids in my office who are quite young and are, are literally obese. Um, it's really unfortunate to see. And that, and that causes diabetes, things of that nature. And we're not talking about a little baby fat that hasn't, you know, gone away. We're talking about obese people, um, well over what, where they should be. Um, so language. So grammar skills and pronunciation should develop over years, right? Um, they should be able to engage in conversation with various people. So whether from adults to their peers, and hopefully they have increased their vocabulary. And I think a lot of that comes from reading and being around people that have a different vocabulary. The concrete operational stage is able to think logically about concrete concepts that have difficulty understanding abstract or hypothetical concepts. School so here is an example of school-aged children um, with P Piaget's concrete operational stages, right? So we have um, decentration, reversibility, inductive logic, and deductive logic. You'll see this in your text. Um, Piaget looked at these through different ways of testing the, hor the horizontal decklage, applying new thinking to all kinds of problems and conservation, the ability to logically determine that a certain quantity remains the same despite adjustments to its container shape or apparent size. So he would have kids be in a room and maybe have the liquid in the container be exactly the same and just change the shape of the container and see how they did their reasoning and understanding like, is the liquid amount still the same or is it different because the container's different? Very interesting things, right? Um, so concrete operations as rule for problem solving. So cognitive development consists of acquiring a set of basic rules applied to a broader ranges of problems. Movement from run world to the next requires experience and this approach is a cross between Piaget's theory and the information processing theory. And this is Siegler's thoughts. So there was more tests about is are Piaget's views correct or not. So they would have them balance things, and you'll you'll read more about that in your text. Um, so processing efficiency, the ability to make efficient use of short-term memory capacity. So major component of cognitive growth, increased speed of cognitive processing, and change um, validated with cross-cultural research. Automatic. Automaticity, the ability to recall information from long-term memory without using short-term memory capacity. So it frees up short-term memory space for more complex processing and achieve primarily through practice, which you see this a lot with, um, with repetition and practicing and flashcards and things of that nature. Um, just trying to better remember and recall information. Um, some parents are very into some of these things as far as development for their children. Um, I'm gonna move on to the next chapter. Okay, so for, we're talking about personality. Um, and some of you that have children or just no children, you can see differences in personality even though they're raised in the same household. I see it in my household all the time. Freud feels the challenge is to form emotional bonds with peers and move beyond sole earlier formed bonds. So beyond family bonds, Erickson, the challenge is to develop a sense of competence and willingness to work toward goal, industry versus inferiority stage. So the big five personality traits, extroversion, agreeableness, openness, neuroticism, um, and conscientiousness. Bandura the, and reciprocal determini determinism, the three components are person's Person components of the traits, the behavior, and the environment, um, and they all influence one another. So environmental reinforces emotional response of others and social support, personal cognitive factors, beliefs, traits, and emotions, and behavior, response to failure, intimidation of imitation of models. Sorry, I got tongue-tied there. 
So these all work together as far as reinforcing a person's potential personality. So the psychological self, a person's understanding of his or her enduring psychological characteristics. Um, so comparison and self descriptions, less tied to external features and more complex. Now, I don't know how many kids, um, necessarily will be like, that's my psychological self, but these are things people observe in children as they're, they're going into adolescence, uh, self-efficacy. An individual's belief in his or her capacity to cause intended events. So social comparisons, encouragement from value sources, and actual experiences. And self-efficacy is like a way of to individuation, right? Becoming who you are, being okay with yourself, um, feeling pretty satisfied with where you're at in that, in that place. Um, so self-esteem turns into global evaluative component of self-worth and being begins to develop by age seven. And I think self-esteem is one of those things. I, I don't necessarily really like that term because sometimes the self-esteem, especially within our culture, it's almost like esteeming to be better than. And that usually means better than somebody else or wanting to be the best or we think we're good enough. Or Whereas I do like self-worth because we're all worthy um, of being something and feeling feeling like we have purpose and things of that nature, but not necessarily better than other people. Um, and maybe that's our own cultural um, pressures where we have to esteem to be better. But I think God created us to, like in a sense, without Jesus, we would not be worthy, but he has given us worth. So therefore, um, we have worth. And so to feel like we should be better than anybody else would not necessarily be correct. But you can see in kids, the kids that have confidence or feel good about themselves versus kids that don't. Um, so discrepancy between what one desires and perceived achievement and su perceived support from important people. I think kids who feel supported and feel and feel like they have the backing of like their parents or, you know, there's not a lot of criticism. They are more confident than kids that feel <clears throat> that they're not supported or that they're not accepted for who they are. You know, you'll see this in children that you may know, kids in your own household, things of that nature. Um, direct experience with success or failure, the labels and judgments from others, the value a child attaches to some skill or quality is affected by peers and parents' attitudes. A child could think they're really good at something and then all of a sudden all their peers tell them they're not. That could be really, that could really affect them. Um, I know if my son is very much, my eldest son is very much an athlete and it's very hard for him to not be the best. Um, he's very competitive. And so uh, it's learning to not get discouraged. Like it doesn't have to be all or nothing. I'm either the best or that means I'm terrible. It just means there's always going to be someone better. So how do I teach that to a five-year-old, you know, very gently, you know, but it's, it's interesting seeing as he's starting a new sport right now, his struggle with his own ego. Like I can see him trying to struggle and he's a kid that loves words of affirmation so my my middle son who's very nice was encouraging him and telling him you know you're doing such a good job and blah blah blah, blah. and it was so sweet to see because he very much on his own did that um but trying to help him to see that he's doing well it's just kind of interesting um as you as you're watching self self-worth develop in your children um, the child as psychologist, so focus on internal traits and motivations of others, better understanding that some person plays different roles in life, and less emphasis on external appearance. So kids understanding, like, why people do what they do, um, and that maybe some people are important and other people aren't important, whether it be a peer relationship or things of that nature, and maybe it's not all about how someone appears just based on the outside. Moral reasoning, so um, judgments about the rightness and wrongness of specific actions. And kids get this pretty young, assuming you're teaching kids right and wrong from a young age. But kids will know what is okay and what's not okay. And maybe they're, they'll learn to justify why they do certain things because it's not as bad as that. Um, that still doesn't make it right or wrong, but they start to kind of reason, just like adults, what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. 
not meaning either one of those are appropriate or not appropriate, right? It's based on their own intrinsic little compass that they have inside of themselves. And kids start to establish that at a very young age. We're talking now here, right here, like six to six to 12. I mean, that's a young age that they start developing that. And that's why it's so important how we foster that as parents, right? We are so influential in how they decide to, to reason or come to terms with things. So I know this is a very quick overview. There's much, much more, um, but I just wanted to kind of touch on some of these things. I know you have a lot going on this week. That's why I did not give you the discussion board and giving you all full credit. Week eight will be the same. You will not have to do a discussion board week eight and I'll make sure to post an announcement about it. Um, but I just wanted to give you a quick overview of some things that I found important in these chapters. Make sure you're reading your text and you're continuing to move along. I just wanna encourage you. I know this is hard doing all this information and having all these projects in eight weeks. So I, I can be reasonable in understanding if you can get that angel project done, 100 points makes a big difference in a grade. So anyways, um, I will be talking to you again soon. If you need anything, please don't hesitate to contact me. Um, have a good week. Thank you.